everyone today's video is going to be about my top 10 ways of dealing with or coping with having ankylosing spondylitis so my top 10 is literally that my top 10 it's something that i put together just things that i find useful from a day-to-day -day basis to help me cope with various symptoms of having ankylosing spondylitis hopefully these might be helping you guys out and uh, if there's any others that aren't on my list that you want to suggest feel free to suggest them in the comments below and um, let's get started in at number 10 diet so for me a simple <clears throat> diet of avoiding things that might be too starchy or something that might aggravate me in internally i keep away from those sorts of things so you know things like chips and potato and pasta i kind of go for something i i, I have them but in very very small quantities pasta will be um, sort of gluten-free pasta just to make sure that I'm not going to aggravate anything. I loosely follow the keto diet um, just to make sure that my body is kind of in the best shape possible to you know, handle having AS. So for example, keto diet, if you're not aware of it, it will be things like there's meats um it's mainly just meat actually pretty much but um check it out uh, it's not for everyone i'm not saying go ahead and do it um but just have a look at it it might be good for you you know i i find that i like meat so it works for me uh, and um yeah keeping away the starch so in at number nine we've got a bath with epsom salts if you've got time for a bath, great. If not, you know, I find having a, you just having a shower actually, actually helps with things like movement. It helps the stiffness subside a little bit. It's not, you know, a straight away cure or anything like that, but it does help. So a bath, even better. You're sat there soaking all the goodness of the Epsom salts in. And uh, it's just very relaxing, really. So that's number nine. In at number eight, rest. It's important to listen to your body. Your body will tell you when to rest. Also, what I do is I put aside time for rest. So if I've got a few jobs to do in the day, I will go, you know, job, job, rest, job. So I'm specifically setting time aside to relax catch up you know get get my energy back the idea behind it is that you sort of plan your day so that if you're feeling tired you've got an opportunity there to catch up on say sleep or, or whatever you need to do in certain circumstances that rest period might not be perfectly timed in which case what i do is i have my rest then if i'm still tired later on i will have a sleep later on um, so just make time for rest listen to your body basically uh, which leads me perfectly on to number seven which is spoons now if anybody is familiar with the term spoonies then you might know what I'm talking about. Basically, what a spoonie does is have a set number of spoons throughout the day. Each activity that you do, whether it be getting up and getting dressed, that might be an activity in itself, is measured in one spoon. So say, for example, you have, I don't know, 10 spoons in the day. Each one of these spoons represents the energy that you have to expend throughout the day. So for example, when you get up, you get ready, you've always already used up one spoon, you've only got nine for the rest of the day. Uh, if you've got a 
very demanding physical job, for example, that might take up a bunch of spoons. Who knows? It might take up seven spoons. Who knows? In which case, you've only got two left at the end of the day when you finish work to do what you want to do with. The idea behind it is that you pace yourself. You do things like set aside time for rest. You need time to recharge. So if there's a moment for sleep with, within the day, you can use that to recharge some of your spoons, you get some of your spoons back basically. Um, so I use that in terms of planning my day. It's useful to know exactly where you are in your day and roughly plan where you're likely to fall asleep, for example, or run out of energy. Number six, recognizing your triggers for flares. I think it's important to know what will aggravate your symptoms. I think it's important to you know, know what these are, recognize them when they're either on their way or when they arrive to you, having a plan in place to be able to deal with those. Now, I know it's easier said than done because you don't know when they're going to crop up. You don't know, you know, you might not be prepared for it and bam, something happens. It's a trigger. Bang, you're in a flare up. It's it's easy for me to just say, recognize triggers and, and you know, be prepared. Just be prepared as much as you can. That's probably what I'm getting at. So don't worry yourself about being fully prepared for anything because it's you know, you're never going to be fully prepared there's going to be something coming from here or something from there and it's very difficult but if you can be as ready as you can be and be prepared as much as you can be then it will help and all of these things are there to help rather than be an, an easy fix and we know there's not really an easy fix to cope with the symptoms of AS. It's a combination of a lot of things. So in at number five, support or therapy or talking, however you'd like to look at this. There's a frightening statistic of mental health issues, particularly uh, depression with people who have ankylosing spondylitis. I think it's two thirds of people with AS have uh, or suffer from depression of some kind, which is <clears throat> pretty scary. I, uh, I'm unfortunately one of those people. So it's important to, number one, seek out support when you recognize, it's again, recognition of the, that there's a problem. Get help, talk to somebody, whether it be your GP, you know, private doctor, your rheumatologist, whoever it needs to be, there's plenty of support lines. There's a mental health crisis line um, here in the UK. You, you know, there's there's all sorts of places like Samaritans and things like that that you can call up and just basically talk to people. I think uh, for me that's been really helpful. I've not gone through a the whole process of getting through that. I think it's an ongoing thing that I have to. Uh, do hopefully if there is an end point with that there'll be you know that treatment can actually get me to a better place you know from a, a mental health perspective number four movement there's a phrase motion is lotion it's a hundred percent true the more movement you do the more your joints move the less likely they are to stiffen up in theory anyway um <clears throat> So, you know, you, it's not a case of, right, I got to keep moving and then you go on a marathon. That's not going to be very good for you at all. You've got to do it within your own limitations. You've got to know your limits, as they say, and you've got to work with those or work alongside it. In terms of movement, what I'm talking about is don't be sat down for too long. Don't be lying down in one position for too long. I know it's difficult when you go to bed and sleep. Um, I have that same problem. You get up in the morning, the first thing that happens is like you're, you're kind of all stuck in place and it's not ideal. But 
work with what you've got, try and move as much as possible. Number three, hydrotherapy. Now, I do this not as regularly as I'd like to. I'd like to do it a couple of times a week. There's limitations with you know hydrotherapy pools in our area, I think throughout the UK, so it's a bit of a problem. But hydrotherapy is awesome. It's simple as that. It's all of your the treatments rolled into one. It's like where I described number nine, having a bath with Epsom salts. It's, it's like that. It's nice and warm. It's brilliant. It's movement. There's other people in the, in the classes that do hydrotherapy with you. So you can talk to people with the same issues that you've got. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's non-impact. It's amazing. So I highly recommend it if you can get into some sort of program that supports hydrotherapy, whether it be through the NHS or through uh, the NASS here in the UK. Um, yeah, I urge you to look at it. It's really, really good. So number two medication so medication is really really important it's not something that i think is the be all and end all but at the end of the day things like inflammation what's the there's an easy way and a hard way of kind of treating it the easy way is medication the hard way is through all the other sort of natural treatments of movement and things like that but if you do them both together, you've got the you know the most effective way of dealing with it. And there's all sorts of medications. So for example, there's the non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatories, which literally are that anti-inflammatories. So anything from ibuprofen through to naproxen and uh, toricoxib. Those sorts of things. Some of them do work in different ways as an anti-inflammatory. They work wonders. Also, um, with those, you've also got biologics. So things like you know, Humira and Cosentix, those sorts of things. They work alongside those uh, NSAIDs in a different way um, to effectively lower your immune system so that AS can't progress the disease as fast as it wants to so medication comes in at number two because it is important i know a lot of people don't want to just go straight for medication it's not ideal i know that um just to want medication and nothing else but alongside everything else it's a very good way of coping with the symptoms of as and helping with those symptoms so number one stretches and exercises so this is the all important must do for anybody with as in my opinion um, and in my experience stretches and exercises i do 45 minutes every single day of these stretches anything from little yoga poses um, yoga movements to physiotherapy style stretches and moving as much as you can across your whole body um, and trying to kind of build up the strength in your core so that your body is as good as it can be to help keep as much of the AS under control as possible. I know that's not as easy as that, it's never going to be like that, but you combine that with everything else within the, the 10 things that I've mentioned and suddenly you're going to put yourself in a better position hopefully than you would be if you didn't do any of that at all if you had AS and you didn't do any of these 10 items that I've mentioned I'm not a medical expert so you know this isn't a medical opinion or anything that it's just my opinion I feel that AS would progress quite quickly and quite dangerously but with these 10 things what you're doing is 
giving yourself the best chance to manage your life living with AS. And I think that's the goal that I aim for. Rather than trying to go, I want a cure, there is no cure. So I have to manage my life alongside it. I have to live with it, therefore I might as well live with it in the best possible way um, by keeping it at bay as much as possible. So that's my top 10. I want to do an honourable mention, so uh, number 11, basically, um, for meditation and breathing exercises. I was showing a, a, a bunch of these. They were quite calming in a way. And I know they work for some people. I know they don't work for others. I felt that I wasn't the right person for them to work for. They, don't, they didn't seem to work for me. They, yes, they were calming, but that was it. There was nothing else. You know, I, that I find other things, in, you know, that can calm me without sitting there and sort of breathing deeply or anything like that. I can, for me, rest or sleep is very calming, you know, when I manage to actually, you know, sleep properly. But yeah, anything like hydrotherapy, that's calming for me. So I use those. So that's my top 10. If there is... Any other suggestion that you might have that you think should be in this or if you think that something else should have been number one or something like that, let me know in the comments below. And I, I'd really, really appreciate it if you just subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to build up my channel so that, you know, I'm trying to create a lot of awareness about AS. It doesn't seem to be much out there, to be honest. I think it'd be good to get as much awareness out there as possible. And... Um, let people know that this disease does exist and hopefully we can help each other to be in the best place as possible. Thank you for now and I'll see you next time on the next video. Cheers.